named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said unto him, 
Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Notice the wee difference there, see or enter. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? And we know that God will add a blessing to his word. Yeah. How can these things be? Recently, myself and uh, you know Derek, the deacon in church, Derek was out with me on visits a couple of days a week. And we're out doing a visit and we're talking about that TV program where all the celebrities come on. It's <coughs> called Who Do You Think You Are? And it's where they get the celebrities and they look back at their past to see where their families have come from. So we were discussing this and started to talk about who we are and where we are in God. So this was a, a wee bit of a joint effort on me and Terry's behalf. And there was so, so much material on this. This is just really the bare basics. It's just of this like a wee appetizer when you go to a restaurant to get something to eat that you could maybe look into yourself, that you could maybe study up for yourself to take you further into it. So the message is to try and understand what I feel Nicodemus did not grasp. As he said, how can these things be? How can a man go into his mother's womb a second time? How can these things be? So what I want to try and get over the night is we're not only adopted, but we're also born into the family of God by the regenerational work of the Holy Spirit. So to go forward in anything in life, you need to know how to take the next step. Before you take that next step, it's good to know where you are. So if I was facing this way and I want to go out that door, for me to take the next step, I wouldn't be to go that way. For to go that way, I need to turn this way to go to where I want to be. So, you need to understand where you are in order to get where you want to go. It's the same in our walk with God. To take your next step in your furtherance in God, you need to understand where and who you are so we can move in the right direction. And who would want to go further in God? Amen. Each one of us wants to go further. And no matter how long you're saved, I'm saying 37 years. I still learn stuff new every day. I still want to go further with God. So like in our reading, the Lord Jesus told Nicodemus that he must be born again. And as I say, I don't think Nicodemus truly understood the concept because he asked the Lord Jesus, I must say, go into my mother's womb again. But the Lord Jesus said that he was talking about being born of the Spirit. So tonight I want to, for a few minutes, to show you that not only are you adopted into the family, <coughs> But you're reborn of the Spirit. As a newborn child, we are born into the family of God, both spiritually and naturally. When a person is born again, he is born into the family of God from above. This is called regeneration. A man or a woman receives new life and is placed into the kingdom of God. Regeneration is a renewal or rest restoration of man's spirit back to the image of God man is made new again by the new birth. Colossians 3 and 10 says, And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Romans 12 and 12 says, And do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And Ephesians 4 and 23 says, 
and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So this regeneration or renewing brings a person into spiritual union with the risen Lord. And this renewal or regeneration will have a definite effect and there will be evidence in that person's life that he is born again. Now, what would the evidence of be that someone's born again? Because you say, I'm born again. But is there evidence in your life to back it up? See, they say, oh, but man, oh, I'm saying it. Is there evidence? <coughs> Those born of God will have victory over the world. 1 John 5 and 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, or faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? And those born of God will have victory over sin. Romans 5 and 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin is no more power, because you're under grace. And those born of God will love his word and will love godly things. 1 Peter 2 and 2 says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So what is your desire tonight? Desire to be here, as Stuart said earlier, which is good. But what is your desires weekly? Is your desire <coughs> to further yourself in God? To grow in God? Do you have a strategy to grow in God? Do you have a plan to grow in God? Do you do things to make you grow in God, to make you better? Sportsmen have a plan. Weightlifters go in, they lift weights, people go to the gym. They don't wake up one night and say, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow morning. They have it all planned. They've ever said out, they get up in the morning and they plan. They have a plan of action to go and do stuff. Do you have a plan of action to further your walk with God? <clears throat> Those born of the Spirit will have the witness of the Spirit within themselves. Romans 8 and 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So you have a witness within your heart. So here we clearly see that the Spirit will manifest and nurture or cultivate the character of the Lord Jesus Christ to us, not manifesting unrighteousness or the character of the evil one. 1 John 3 and 10 says, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. That's God saying that, not me. So we have been born and renewed spiritually. This now makes us also a child of the King. And this is more than a person who has been adopted, son. We have become his full child, just as if we were born naturally into the adoptive family. Hence, we're born of the Spirit of God. We're born into the family. So, this adoption is defined as an act of God himself, whereby a born-again child is placed as a son into the family of God and given the full privileges of sonship, just as if he had been born naturally into that family, not just an adopted son but as if he was a born child in that family. Yeah. The Hebrew concept of adoption is similar to our English definition of the word, which denotes a changing of families. Your family has changed. Your daddy has changed. Moses was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter to be heir to the throne. Exodus 2 says, And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. Not just adopted, became a son. And God also adopted Israel as a nation. Exodus 4 and 22 says, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Romans 9 and 4 says, We are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises. 
So this adoption was no new thing. And we as believers are born again into the family of God and the household of faith. John 1, 12 and 13 says, But as many as receive him, to them he gave them the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You're saying tonight you're born of God. Amen. You're born of God. <clears throat> this impartation of a new nature in regeneration and son making and adoption is that this. In regeneration, we receive new life. And in justification, one receives a new standing in that we are an adopted child. We are now legally the sons and daughters of God, Hallelujah. having the full rights and inheritance of the family. Galatians 4 and 4 and 6 says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth a son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of a son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Bless the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are his sons and daughters, and he is our new daddy. Glory to God. Our old daddy's gone. Just like natural parents now today, they will love their children, not because of what they do, but because of who they are. They birthed them. And just like God has birthed us, he loves us not because of what he does, but because of what his son done at Calvary. And he has birthed us Amen. in the Spirit of God. And he has made all this possible. And like our children here on earth, we want what's good for them. We wouldn't want what's bad for them. So does your Heavenly Father want what's good for you tonight. He wants the best for you. Why? Because he loves you. Now, notice there in our reading in Galatians, it said, in the fullness of time. You see, everything is in his time. There's three time zones that we understand here as humans. God lives in eternity, but we live here in three time zones. We live past, present, and future. So, in times past, he predestinated us to adoption. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. We are accepted by his grace. And just on that on Monday night in, in church, uh, uh, what do you call them? Thorpe family were there, and the guy was saying about Jeremiah 1 and 5. About Jeremiah, it says, Before you were formed, I knew you, and I ordained you to be a prophet. God has a plan for your life. And it hit me, sitting on the seat on Monday night, it hit me. I was expelled from school, threw out, no interest in it at all, but God saved me and changed me. And then in work, I was work, got a job in this company, and it's doing well because I worked. You get to work, you're there to work. If you work, you'll do well. And they were putting me through the class two lorry license, but in my heart, I wanted to do the class one. He says, no, you're not doing it. And I was got it, but I went ahead and done the class two. But in my heart, I just knew that I needed this class one for some reason. So I passed it. One week later, they come to me and says, we need you to do the class one now. Could you go back and do it? And I didn't know what it was for. Two months later, I was in Spain on holiday and I was at a Christian place and they asked me to speak and I didn't do it and I felt wet. And I remember coming home on the plane and I says, God, if you ever open the door again, I will not refuse it. Within half an hour of being off the plane, I was down in, I think it was Woolworths or Wellworths down the shore road then getting milk. 
and I had a pastor out of the church, and he says, just a man, I need, would you drive a lorry to Romania for me? God had a plan. Amen. God had a purpose. So about a couple of years later, I was up in with my boss, and there was a manager's job going, and I was up to seeing him about something else. And he says, I told the boys, just come up here for an interview for the manager's job. He says, well, do you want it? I says, but I have no exams. I was expelled from school. I says, don't you worry about that. And we'll sort that out. God had a plan. And ever and I learned in that management side of things, I now take into the new job in the church. God has a plan for your life. Yeah. Whatever you're going through, God has a day in things for you to do. Because he's a plan for you. Because he's a future for you. When did they try and kill Moses? When was the first time they tried to kill him? When he was a baby. When did they try first try and kill Jesus? When he was a baby. Why did, what can a baby do? It has a future. Satan tries to destroy your future. Tries to put you down. Tried to destroy me in school. Running around with the wrong people. Expelled from it throughout. But you have a future in God. God is ordaining things for you. So in times present, we're born again by the Holy Spirit of adoption as born again children of God. 1 John 11 and 12 says, He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as as many received him, to them he gave the right to become <coughs> the children of God, to those who believe in his name. It's our right to be his children tonight. Now, if you're saved tonight, you have heard his voice. He has called you. Now, you don't recognize a voice. If someone come in here and shout it through that door, if you've never heard them before, you won't know who they are. But if you've heard their first voice before, you've wrecked them you'll know who they are. You'll recognize that voice. And when you hear the voice of the shepherd calling you, you've heard that before. But because before he formed you, he knew you. He's already spoke to you. He knew you. So you call on that there. And we are his children. And in the fullness of time, we will have the full manifestation of our sonship in Jesus. In the natural world, as adopted son cannot be like his parents who adopted him. He'll never look like him. But with God, it's different because of the regeneration of our minds and the spirit. But then when Christ comes back, we will have the nature, the resurrection and the translation of the saints and we will look like him. Philippians 4, 20 and 21 says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait. For the Saviour, the Lord Jesus, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things. You may be getting it difficult here tonight, in this life. Difficult in your body, difficulties in health, difficulties with what you're going. But we are going to be transformed. Glory to God. We're going to be transformed to be like him. No more pain. No more suffering, no more illness, no more sickness, no more worry, no more sorrow. We're going to be changed and we're going to be like him. Wow. Glory to God. So what are the benefits of being a child of God? We now have a new family name. 1 John 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. You're a child of God tonight. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And what a privilege to be called a child of God. Because I go and see people. And all the money in the world. And all the doctors and all the knowledge can't change what's going on with them. Yeah. Because they're dying with sin. Yeah. It's sin that's in us and it'll come to us all. But see when you have him, you have a hope in your heart. Amen. See when you have him. You have everything because you have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. We will all have the family likeness. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. Because, you know, I come up from a big family. with seven brothers and four sisters. There's 12 wow. of us. Now, some of us look alike, but there's the odd one that's a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> but we will all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image 
from glory to glory, Amen. just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Bless the Lord. And we will have the parents' love. Maybe you grew up and you didn't have a parent's love. Maybe you had a rough childhood. Maybe it was a nasty. So I didn't get too much love when I was a kid. Because there's too many of us. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just too many of us. It was rough way back in the day. But this love, for God so loved the world that he gave. Mm. He gave his son. And that love, there's nothing that can match that love. First John 5 and 1 says, Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. Christ loves each and every one of us tonight. So what, am I, what was I trying to say tonight? I stand here knowing who I am. I am a child of God. I know my daddy loves me. Not based on my performance. Not based on how good I am. Because my goodness is as filthy rags. Yes. I will not boast in anything. Because when I get there, if I thought it was me, I would get up and boast about it. Because that's the way we are. It's totally 150% all to do with what Jesus done. Amen. But I do try and be good because I want to please him. Amen. I want to please my daddy. As I say, I know that my daddy loves me no matter what comes my way. His love for me shall never fail. No matter what trouble you're in, no matter what darkness comes your way, what hole you're in, Paul and them were in the jail in the darkness. But they sing, still had a song in their heart. Still sung to God. No matter what trouble, death, tragedy, sickness, he's with you. He's with you the whole way. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And he's probably closer at those times than you realise. His love for me shall never fail. And that is my starting point from going on, from when I get up tomorrow, when I take my next step, that I am his child and that he loves me. I know whatever's going on in my life is for his perfect will. Glory to God. I know who I am. So who do you think you are tonight? You're a child of God. Amen. Believe that with all your heart. Believe that he loves you. Believe that he cares about you. Believe that he's interested in you. No matter who you are, you have a plan and a purpose for him. So God bless you tonight. Please be for us.